Just a little heads up before we actually begin the topic of this video. No audio video clips from WrestleMania last night or pictures from WrestleMania are being used in this video seeing that they belong to World Wrestling Entertainment right now. So, so just to get the little disclaimer out the way and that this video may contain some mature language. Viewer discretion is advised. And this video is going to be double uploaded on both Code Equestria Sports and on the Code Equestria main channel. So you can catch it both just seconds apart. As you all are well aware, from the beginnings of this channel, I am a WWE Hardcore lifer. I love the sport of professional wrestling as a whole, but most importantly, my entire life has been centered around watching the WWE, and most importantly, its most signature event, WrestleMania, which had its 30th edition last night. Which, I preceded that by watching all the previous 29 that had come before in the week. But, that's not what the subject of this video is about. If you have seen WrestleMania 30 and have followed the internet enough, then you know what this video is about. But in case you don't, Last night in New Orleans, The Undertaker's undefeated streak of 21 straight victories over 21 straight years ended at the hands of Brock Lesnar. To many on the internet last night, this was cue to rage. Many people were saddened. But, for the majority of the wrestling community, they were angered by the fact that it was Brock Lesnar that took the vaunted streak. Now, we don't know the many details that go on behind the scenes, especially I don't, concerning why this decision was made. And I don't care about why the decision was made. But what I do care about, however is the reaction to it. Now, I am 30 years old, and I have seen many things in a wrestling ring and many things in the WWE especially, and I have seen many things in sports. There is nothing in my entire lifetime my entire existence on this planet Earth that I have seen more impressive. And I don't care if it's staged or not because I will always believe no matter what that professional wrestling is real. You can give me all the evidence you want. It's real to me. These people, this sport, everything about it, it's real to me. Always will be. I have never seen anything more impressive than a guy going on the biggest stage possible and winning. And not just winning, but winning consistently. And there used to be a there's a joke that I used to always say, and I did last night, that I always say to all my friends that know me that are wrestling fans. I called The Undertaker's streak the cosmic law of the universe. I put it right up there with death and taxes and liberty for everybody. I put it right up there. There was, there's death. There's taxes, there's liberty, and then there's a law that the Undertaker should never and has never been beaten 
at WrestleMania. That law was broken last night. And what it means to me, especially, is two things. For me personally, before I get to the outward point, I was shocked. I was dumbfounded. Me and my mother, who is 60, 65, going on 66, Undertaker fan for the whole duration, was in shock and awe. She couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. The crowd. The crowd was up. And then it just all of a sudden went dead. Like losing a family member, this was. Like attending somebody's literal funeral. Instead, it was that the person that was going to be in the casket, you literally (laughs) saw get shot and killed right in front of you. And the funeral was right there. And the and the procession was right there. And it was instantaneous with no wait. And you had no time to grieve about it. No time to really think about it. And now that I think about it. And I know this is going to come to the disappointment of a lot of my wrestling fans friends and a lot of wrestling fans on YouTube. It's going to come to a lot of disappointment. It's going to come to a lot of anger. And I know I'm going to get comments in the comments section that is going to be like, you're crazy. You're not a true wrestling fan. How can you say this? The streak had to end. Now, whether... Brock Lesnar is the right guy to give it to. That is a totally different conversation. That is a totally different thing. That is for the Code Harmony podcast. That is something to ponder. But the mere notion that the streak has to end. It had to. And here's why. Because... Not only was the streak holding The Undertaker there. It was the only thing he was wrestling for. Understand, this guy wasn't just a part-timer. This guy was... This was the only match that The Undertaker did. Throughout the entire calendar year last year, slightly the year before that, this became the only match that he did. He is about to be 50 this year, wrestling fans. 5-0. Not only did the streak have to end for Taker's sake, because he looked like a guy that could not go out there and perform at his absolute best. He was slow. He was sluggish. He was... What? I would dare say he was terrible out there. And, you know, in sports, when you have great heroes, great legends, great athletes that we love and we cherish and we hold up as idols and legends of the game and people that have changed the game, We have seen so many times in professional sports the athlete that does one more at bat, one more game, one more tackle. And it's always that one more tackle, one more match. It's always that going that one more that you shouldn't, that you see that the guy just doesn't have it. And then when we see the penultimate ending of knowing that the athlete that we love, the idol that we love, doesn't have it anymore, then what do we do? We 
sit there and we at first we're angry at the fact of oh my god he got injured again and oh my god you know he finally lost and oh my god he's not the same player that he was and we go if he would have retired last year it would have been the happy ending it would have been okay and I would have been okay with it. And we do this to ourselves. And I did this to myself last night. I asked myself the question last night. If he would have retired last year. Would, he, would I have been okay with it? And the answer of course was yes. But that's armchair quarterback. The truth is... It's about the mystique of what our idols mean. It's about what our idols mean. When one of our idols, one of our guys, one of the people we support reaches mythic level, which the Undertaker absolutely did, this streak was not just a guy winning. This Streak was a myth. It was a legend. It's wrestling folklore. Given life, given purpose, given meaning to people. It is wrestling folklore. For people that are outside of the sport, let me put it in context of your sport. Whether it be baseball, football. Imagine if your favorite quarterback Tom Brady, Russell Wilson. Imagine if your favorite team, let's say, let's say through divine intervention or luck, your favorite team goes to 21 straight Super Bowls. Let's say your franchise is that fortunate where for 21 straight years, whether it be through free agency or drafts, goes to 21 straight Super Bowls and wins them. Wouldn't you talk about that as something mythic, as something unreal, unhuman, never heard of? Well, that is exactly what this streak, Taker's streak, means to all of us in the wrestling business. This is a guy going to 21 straight Super Bowls, and no matter who they put in front of him, Handicap matches, hardcore matches, no holds barred matches, big guys, small guys, brothers, legends, whoever they put in front of him, he beat. And in the later years, it became so mythic, the legend became so mythic, and I take the words that I was given from my friend, the guy that got me into the, I guess, communications business, as it were, a guy by the name of uh, Tony Desiri, who does radio for Yahoo Sports, works out of Memphis, Tennessee, he said once on his radio show and reiterated multiple times when he used to work in Colorado Springs, where I used to live, he used to emphasize this saying, when the legend becomes fact, print the legend. That is what the Undertaker streak was. It was the legend that became for us cosmic law it became fact the fact that last night the fact was proven untrue it's the fact that in the end it was just a myth in the end the streak was just a streak that it became so crushing us because the legend to us became fact 
and we printed that legend. We put it on shirts. The WWE eventually advertised it, and it was in a video game as a main mode. The legend had become the fact. And now that that fact is broken, we have to deal with the aftermath of what that means. And we can't quantify it. Shock is not the word, in my view, in my personal opinion. Shock is not the word that I would use to describe how I felt. Because... Shock also implies the five stages of grief. It also implies that after the initial shock, you're going to be angry. Well, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, I am not angry. I am respectful. I am thankful. And to me, and to anybody who is a true wrestling fan, a true connoisseur of our sport that have seen the legends of our day come and go. For this one man, six foot ten, to be a constant, to be an absolute, to be a fact. For 21 straight years. It is something that will never ever be duplicated again, nor should it. There should never be another Undertaker. There should never be another streak. We should not be asking the question of why now. We should be asking the question of if not when. We should be Honoring the fact that we were in the presence of true greatness. That we saw something truly unbelievable, mythical, mythical. That will never happen again. And honor the man that did it. Not the fact... And don't even worry about all the stuff that goes behind the scenes for this to kind of happen. Ignore all that, because that's not the point. It is the fact that this man looked superhuman, unbeatable, unflappable. No matter what the resolve, no matter how hard it was, he got the job done it is it is the ultimate example to me of work ethic dedication and most of all love of your craft and respect of your craft and if you have true respect of your craft you will know when it's time even though it turns the myth that became fact back into just a number. Just a digit. 21 and 1. Even though it changes it back into just a digit. If you respect the business enough. If you respect your craft. And you respect the future of your craft. You will know when to walk away. You will know that it is time. Who cares if... If Brock Lesnar was the guy that it was given to. It could have been John Cena. It could have been Sting. It could have been anybody. And we still would have reacted with the same anger and the same shock of, Oh, the streak's over. We would have reacted the same. Whether it was Brock Lesnar, whether it was Sting, whether it was the next guy up. We would have reacted the same. Why? Because our myth, our hero fantasy, our mythic hero, our superhero, our undefeated Superman finally went down. And it's the realization that in the end, that the Undertaker was mortal. 
that it is the hardest pill as a fan to take. But it not only represents the end of that, it represents not the end of a era. It is the end of the era. And if you're a hardcore wrestling fan, then you know the era of which I speak. If you're not, I'm going to give you a history lesson. Between the years of 1995 to about, I would say, yeah, I would say about 2010, the WWE was in a period that is referred to as the Attitude Era. The Undertaker was one of the pillars of this era, and the streak happened throughout it. Now, what is the Attitude Era? Well, the Attitude Era was the era of the WWE in which it grew out of its kid-friendly motif and decided to do things more adult. There were more matches that involved blood in it and hardcore wrestling, and the women wrestlers were provocative and wear sexy clothing, and there was bra and panties matches, and things would explode, and the wrestlers themselves would cuss and do profane and perverse acts for storylines, and storylines were these dark, gritty things that would often become personal affairs. To many wrestling fans like myself, the Attitude Era is referred to as the greatest era in the history of the WWE and the greatest single era, the greatest single encapsulation of time in the history of professional wrestling because there was a rivalry with WCW that went on to 2001 that had the WWE in trouble and almost bankrupt. You had The Undertaker's wanted streak. You had guys like Stone Cold Steve Austin making his move and Triple H and The Rock and DX and groups like Evolution and the birth of SmackDown and the evolution of Raw. And this referred to in wrestling terms is greatness. It is greatness. And what the Undertaker's loss last night represented for all those that can't let it go, that are trapped and wish that it was 1998 all over again, that the Attitude Era could return and flourish again, that the WWE was better then, and it's not now. What this loss signified to all those people, not me, because I can evolve with the times. I'm okay with where the WWE is now. I like where the WWE is now. Reminds me a little bit more of the late 80s, mid 80s when I grew up. But what it signified for them was that the Attitude Era is not coming back and that the Attitude Era is over. The Undertaker's loss symbolically represented that the pillars of the Attitude Era, which many consider the greatest era of all time, all the pillars had shifted and moved out of the way. The Undertaker's loss signifies for the wrestling business, and most importantly the WWE, the final note in the old era, in the beginning, the true beginning of a transition into a new era, which apparently is being dubbed the reality era. This kind of reaction to the changing of an era has happened before. Remember in the 1980s when Hulk Hogan seemingly ruled the world? 
and that Hulk Hogan was unstoppable? Remember that? Remember between the years of 1985 and 93, how Hulk Hogan was unquestionably the superstar of superstars? Remember the year or two after Hogan left? How the WWE entered this kind of dark, unidentified age? Well, that wrestling fans is what this is. This is Hogan leaving. This is the end of the era of attitude, and it's not coming back. It's over. Shawn Michaels is gone. Austin is gone. The Rock is gone. And now, Taker is gone. But it's not a time to get angry. It's not a time to get bitter. It's not the time to look at the WWE and go, you finally done it. It is the time for us to prepare for the new era and to allow the new stars of tomorrow to take the mantle and see how far they can carry it. But also to reflect and understand that what we saw in these 15 years, what we saw in the Attitude Era, what we saw in it, was something truly special, something truly memorable, something truly different, and that, like Hogan for me in the 1980s, that was my God. The Undertaker was your God. The Undertaker was your Hogan. And that unlike Hogan, that had his bouts of immortality, Your God was a true immortal and looked the part and played the part and accentuated the part. He was something truly special in the streak, no matter who broke it. The fact that the streak even exists is what makes it special, what makes it important, what makes it different. What makes that era in time, that capital in time, important? This is not the time to worry and complain about the end of the streak. This is the time to marvel at the fact that a streak existed. That we were witnesses to something that has never been done in the world of sports. And yes, I say the word sports with absolute conviction. I was not there when I was not born. The Miami Dolphins went 17-0. That streak, the only reason that has any relevance to me is because because yes, the end keeps bringing it up every year before the final team goes down. UCLA's winning streak of 80 straight games is relevant to me. Go to Maggio's winning streak or hitting streak 56 straight games has no relevance to me because I wasn't there to see it. It means nothing to me because I wasn't there. Patriot almost went undefeated. That's the only thing that I can play it. But this, this, I was there. Over the last seven days, I watched almost every match of the street for the second or maybe even some third time.
This rick is my 72 dolphins. It is my Joe Jamaggio. It is my UCLA. It is my New York Yankees. It's my Boston Celtics of the late 60s. This is my streak. This is my sports streak. And no matter who broke it, no matter if it was broken, it will always remain special. Why? Because I witnessed it from the beginning to it. And. And that the man or man responsible for that streak became a part of his. Became a part of my life, became a time, became part of the time capsule of my existence. Thirty years as it has been, and that wrestling fan should be the lesson learned here. Streaks and, and but the memories created by the streak, the way you of what it felt like to be part of it, to take ownership of it, to feel that it is yours and that you witness something truly great. That is the lesson that we should all learn here. We should all be angry. After Brock Lesnar, Paul Heyman, Vince McMahon, the story and writers, we should not be angry at them. We should be thanking them for giving us wrestling fans our streak, our Joe Jaggio, our UCLA, our 17 and 0, to give us something equivalent to that is something truly special. And not only to give us that, but to give us an entire error that made wrestling important to us. And made it important to everyone. Sure, the next era is the reality. Is going to be better than the other two era? Probably not. Nothing ever is that comes after true greatness. But, but it is in moments like this in repass that we should honor something as incredible, something as noteworthy, something as fantastic as the street. Because to me, there is, there may be a one. In real life, there may be one, one on the column. It, it may forever be shown on video. It may ever be present. But in my mind, and in my heart, there is no one. It will always be 21 and oh, And that. That. Not how it ended, but the that they existed should be what we remember. Because oftentimes, when we get older, we don't appreciate it. what was given to us till after it's gone. Well, it's gone now. So I guess, world, what I'm saying to you, it's time to appreciate it, because it will never happen again. I'm peace in your honor. Thanks for watching this.